What is going on guys, welcome back. In this video today we're going to learn how to massively speed up working with Pandas data frames by using a GPU data frame library called QDF which is designed for fast and efficient data manipulation on GPUs from NVIDIA. So let us get right into it. All right, so we're going to learn how to massively speed up working with Pandas data frames in this video today by using a library called QDF, which is designed for NVIDIA GPUs and allows us to use our GPUs to do data manipulation, leading to a massive speed up when working with data frames. Now, I do have some code here prepared to show you how this works and how much faster this is. But first of all, we need to make sure that we have the proper version of the QDF package installed. And for this, we need to know what CUDA version is running on our system. Now, of course, this only works if you have a GPU that supports CUDA. And if you have such a GPU on Linux, you can run NVIDIA SMI, just Google how it works on Windows if it doesn't work in the same way. Uh, and in my case here, it says CUDA version 12.5. So I know I need the package for CUDA 12. So what I do is I type pip3 install QDF CU 12. Now, if you have CUDA 11, you install QDF CU 11, and so on. So I already have this installed on my system. And once you have this installed, basically all you have to do is you have to replace pandas data frames by QDF data frames, nothing else changes and you have a massive, massive speed up um, in your operation. So this first file that I have here, what I do here is I generate random values, I have 10 to the power of eight rows, which is quite a bit. And what I do is I generate random values, I also have IDs. And then I take this dictionary that is the result of doing that and I turn it into a pandas data frame and into a QDF data frame. And then basically I just group by ID and aggregate the value column. So I just sum up all the values. I do that here for pandas on the CPU and I do that with QDF on the GPU and QDF also uses the CPU if the GPU is not available or problematic or not reasonable or something like that. Um, but I also have to append here sort index because since the GPU is doing everything in parallel, the order is messed up a little bit, but this is not really a problem. So I just sort it and that's the only difference. And for these two functions, I measure the time. And when I run this now, you will see that for the pandas data frame, uh, it takes 1.1 seconds for the QDF data frame or for the Q data frame, it takes uh, 0.07 seconds, which is a speed up of 15 or in percent of 1,403%. This is massive. Um, this is an extreme speed up. And I think I saw somewhere uh, the claim that you can get a speed up of up to 150. So 150 times faster using QDF. Now I have a second script here, main 2PY. Uh, where I load an actual data set, uh, which is the yellow trip data. So it's a taxi data set uh, in parquet format. Uh, I load it here in pandas, I load it here in QDF. And what I do here is some basic stuff like dropping all the NAND values, um, filtering for a trip distance larger than two, and then also again, grouping and then uh, applying the mean operation or aggregation and the sum aggregation for these two columns. And then I sort the values here by trip distance, and then I get the result. I do the exact same thing here for the CUDA data frame. And if I run this code, you are going to see after some time that the pandas time was 0.46 seconds, the QDF time is 0.1 seconds. So here we have a speed up of 4.5. So 4.5 times faster. And in percent, this is 355%. So you can see that these operations are much faster using QDF, even though nothing else changes. So I just take the data frame and I turn it into a QDF data frame, or into a CUDA data frame, you could say. Uh, and it's much faster because it utilizes the GPU. Now, one thing that you have to consider here is when you want to compare those values, the resulting values for equality, or in terms of equality, you have to do it with NP all close because these values are basically the same, but not exactly because there are some slight differences here when it comes to floating point numbers, we're talking about very, very small differences, I actually print them here in the end. Um, we're talking about something like E negative 10. 
So something very, very small. But we have some small imprecisions when it comes to floating point numbers because the arithmetic, the floating point arithmetic is done differently on a CPU and on a GPU. So we will have some small differences, which means that if we compare for exact equality, we're not going to get a true, we're going to get a false. But we have this function NP all close to basically uh, see if the values are close enough. And in this case, they are. I do the same thing here for the individual values, trip distance and total amount. So we can see we get the same results uh, with some slight, very, very small uh, differences. But it's not necessarily because the operations are wrong, but just because these small inconsistencies or the small imprecisions on a floating point uh, or in the floating point arithmetics are just different ones. They're also there with the CPU, but they're just different ones on the GPU. So this is how you do that. But there's an even simpler way to do that in Jupyter Notebooks. So in Jupyter Notebooks, all you have to do is you have to load an extension in this extension uh, will allow you to not even have to use QDF at all. So if I open up, actually, let me navigate here to the current directory. Um, I can open up a Jupyter lab instance here. And um, I can copy paste some code so I can actually go and uh, let's actually use this code here. Let's copy paste that, go to the browser, open a new Jupyter notebook, save it as main IPYNB, copy paste this. And now let's say I don't even want to have these different, um, these different uh, data frame types, I can actually remove everything that has to do with QDF, I have my basic pandas code. So I can remove also this year, and I can remove also this year, and I can remove this year and also the speed up calculations and all the comparisons. So I just have the operation in pandas, I can run this and we will get something like one point something. Yeah, 1.09 seconds. Now, the great thing that I can do here is I can add one line to my Jupyter notebook, which is percent load extension and then just QDF pandas. And by doing that, it automatically uses QDF and not pandas anymore. So you can see that now the operation took 0.07 seconds, even though I don't use QDF at all, I don't use any QDF explicitly, I just have my pandas code without even changing anything about it. And just by saying I want to use QDF pandas, it is using QDF pandas, and I have a speed up, which is massive. Uh, now the best way to, to just, uh, you know, disable this again is to restart the kernel. So that's the best thing that you can do. If you want to, or actually, I don't even know if that's going to solve it. Maybe I have to even start the Jupyter lab instance. No, actually restarting the kernel is fine. Uh, but yeah, if you say load extension in a Jupyter notebook, QDF pandas, you're automatically telling your environment or your kernel to use QDF instead of pandas and to use the GPU when possible, which will lead to a, uh, which will lead to a massive speed up. So that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it and hope you learned something. If so, let me know by hitting a like button and leaving a comment in the comment section down below. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell to not miss a single future video for free. Other than that, thank you much for watching. See you in the next video and bye.